mail call. Looks like somebody's already got to it. What you doing here, cute cat? Are you guarding it for me? All right. Well, let's see what we got here. This is the tankless water heater. <sighs> Made in China. Anywhere. What? What you got there going on, buddy? You have to get off so I can open it up. You silly bird. Kitty cats. So what you doing? Can you get down? Huh? Come on. I want to see what's inside. Boy, good boy. Alright, folks. First thing you're going to see is the um, actual unit. It's wrapping its cellar thing. It's pretty light. Yes, pretty light. It has a box that comes with it. Fairly heavy box. We'll put that aside for now. Let's take a look. Now this is not going to be very big, of course, because it's um, meant to be portable. This is the bottom of it. Here's your pipes. It's going to take batteries. I got the D-sized batteries already, rechargeables. When I go to use it. a warning sticker on it it says caution do not over tighten that is good because see these things here if you look down here it's it's all very tight it has a mounting bracket on the bottom I like these these are these are pretty cool you just gotta make sure you have plenty of air space Get it out. Okay, this is what it looks like from the back. It has this handle. You can hang from a tree. It's a hot surface, so you don't want to be grabbing onto that. This is the front. We're going to flip it over. As you can see here, this is the camp plux. Low energy, high output. Minimum, max. Minimum, max. Gas input. Water out, input and output. Here's your batteries. Okay, see here? Takes two D sized batteries. Rotate that over. This is the side. Your hot danger symbols. CSI, CSA, and ANSI. Portable hot water here for outdoor use only. Do not do this indoors. Has its own igniter. I like it, folks. So what we'll do now is we'll get the instructions out. Take a look at them. All right? Be right back. Well... Now the seal of approval has definitely gone for the inside of the box. So we'll have to wait till the kitty is no longer enthused about it. Okay, put it back in its protective shipping material so we don't damage it. Because it is very, I won't say super delicate, but I want to get a ship, another container to put it in. There's a website out there where... Uh, fella had installed one of these inside of a case and I want to see if I can find that video and share it with you also. Alright folks you get a um, 
regulator with hose. Looks like about a four foot, five foot hose. Get that. All right, well, now that the cat has looked it over, the plumber kitty, you get your handhold sprayer. You get two wrenches to go with it. Hot and cold input. Input a cold, output hot. Some adapters and connectors and some other accoutrements that you need to look at. Hardware. And then the manual. All right, and as you can see, the manual is in different languages, so you find the one you can read. See here. And then there's also a support and warning. Please do not return this product to the store you bought it. Contact us at that number right there or their website. So let's see. You're all set, ready to use it. So now you want to go through this guy here. Read it over. There's the information about it. I'm a man of little words, so here's a breakdown of what everything is. All right, here's how to properly do the connections if you're going to do external. This connection is for low voltage battery only. Do not connect 120 or 240 to it. That might be right. right. This is the list of what was with it. Okay. All right. How to hook it all up using your acquired features. Making the connections. Putting your valves in if you need to. I would recommend going over the manual three or four times before you go to use it for the first time. That way you understand it. How to use it. How to don't mess it up. Remember folks that wants to use clean water. Don't use brackish water or dirty water. It's not meant for that at all. If you got a filter system, filter your water first. As a nutshell folks, the Camplux portable Tankless water heater. Hello, Millie. Say hi. Say hi, Millie. I love my Millie. She's a bratter. She's my oldest ratter. She will go down and get those rats if they're ever in the house, which they haven't been in a while, but that's because we've got the cat. I love my kitty. I love my Millie. She's my Millie. Alright, first thing you want to do when you're working on this to do these mods is to remove these machine screws from a self-tapped holes to remove this hanger. Set it aside for future use. You won't need those screws anymore. So instead of throwing them away, just put them back where you found them. Right there, folks. Okay. This is the back side of this water heater. We're going to mount it and there's somebody who wants to come and say hi and claw me to death. I'm going to mount it to this door and it's going to close in on this box here so we can keep this protected because it's very fragile. In my guys, it's fragile because you can dent it up like crazy. It's meant to be moved around. So, all right, folks. So the next thing you want to do is you have to use a half inch inside diameter MIP and a half inch inside diameter PIP for female to make this connection here. You want to use gas tape. It's this stuff right here. It's yellow. It says gas piping. It was a dollar something I think. Made in Malaysia, Omaha, Nebraska, but made in Malaysia. So a couple of Malaysians working. I ran it two and a half times around 
each one right there this is nice you want to use a wrench on this while well, you're using a wrench on this because you don't want to break this connection here this has a wrench placed there this is your gas in inlet okay you want to put it at an angle almost parallel and your hose your gas this is your gas manifold and that's your fitting it's flared on the end so you don't have to worry about you can take it on and off it's designed to come on and off so there's that you can that's to ensure that it makes a good seal this flared fitting here just keep this cover like that eventually I may put it on there depending on how it's going to fit in this box <clears throat> we'll find out if we're going to be able to do that or not but these are the connection points here and here we're going to do all this mechanical work here before we put it in the box and mount it because this way it's easier to operate it's easier to work with it this is your water outlet your hot water side this is your cool water side they give you these these fittings here and here and as quick disconnect here and here still trying to figure what the blue one how they're going to work the blue one but it seems like something's missing but i don't know what yet but we'll we'll show you more as we as we keep going along folks And as you can see here, the supervisor is checking out the work site to make sure that everything's okay. And I guess he'll be back after his break. <laughs> so what we've done here, folks, is we've taken the measurements, drilled the two holes that are necessary to mount the head. This is the filter head. Now it is polarized, so you have to pay attention down here where it says out and in so you want to do in out now it'll go this is how it'll look like when it's in there of course it's going to be sitting in this direction like this so you want to be able to orientate it so when you make your loop your loop is going to go in the front or the back depending on how you set it up I don't have the elbows I only had straights and I can't find any elbows so we're gonna go ahead and do the straights so what we're gonna do since we have this much distance we're gonna go ahead and have the jumper come out and go through so we'll see how that works out but uh, anyway here's what we got That's what we're doing in order to take those filters right there in a tub so it will be able to filter the water without it leaking all right well the supervisor's back to check the first connection now we're going to do the second and we're going to do it on the opposite side so these guys will all match up now remember when you're doing your teflon tape to put it in the same direction as you're going to screw it in so that way it doesn't unscrew you go about three times around i'll show you that in just a second so that's twice around and then when you're done you just just grab it you can cut it you can pull it just make sure you don't leave any strings sitting out there to clog up the line and of course like anything else you want to make sure you always put the lid on it that way you don't have to worry about it unreeling because boy if you drop this and that starts to spread out you might as well say goodbye to that portion that hit the ground because you don't want to use it because it might have something exposed 